Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Friday again. We're back with another live stream on September 9th, 2022. I'm going to be doing some animation today. I'm neck deep in working on Snow Bear, and so I just want to keep going. And uh, it's been going really cool. Um, twice a week I've been uh, live streaming with our, uh, our members over at Creature Art Teacher. And by the way, if you want to get involved more with the, the live live streams and see more of the making of Snow Bear, go on over to creatureartteacher.com and sign up and be a member. Along along with that, you'll get all of our, you know, over 600 or up to 600 hours. I think oh, we're at 600. Over 600. over 600 hours of uh, art education, animation, education, instruction, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, uh, Photoshop brushes uh, that also work in uh, other apps and softwares and all kinds of stuff yeah actually also if you're a student or teacher right now running a back to school sale on memberships and you can get those for basically it's like 150 dollars off an annual membership so you get it for just 99 bucks a year if you're a teacher or student yeah uh what other things are going on right now nick well the big one we put a video out on this a couple days ago yep. we have a live painting workshop coming up in uh that's right in i forgot that you i forgot to, to mention it? that do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. So um, a couple of years ago, uh, Nick and I were in Europe, and we were hanging out with some friends in England, and they were taking us around, and we, they took us to this castle, and we thought, man, this would be a really cool place to do a workshop. And so we got together with my friend Ronnie Williford. We talked to the castle. It all worked out, and we ended up doing a plain air watercolor workshop at this castle in England. And it was, it was so cool and so successful. We had such a great time. We decided to do another one in Sarasota, Florida, in our backyard, right down the road. Um, and so the following year, we did one. It was Ronnie Williford again and myself and the, and the rest of the gang, uh, Dustin and, and Nick and everybody. And um, we did another uh, four-day workshop right in Sarasota, and that was really cool. And then, of course, we had COVID and all that stuff. But I, and, uh, then we recently, uh, about a year and a half ago, I moved into a new place. Nick and I uh, moved closer together here in Orlando, and I moved into a new place right on a park, uh, a state park called Wakaiva Springs State Park. And um, it's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful parks uh, in the state, I think. And, uh, and it's got springs and all kinds of beautiful wildlife and everything else. And they've got a big camp there. Uh, it's a youth camp, but it, 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 they use it for other things as well. It's got 16 cabins. It's got a, a, a dining hall. It's got a pool. It's got all kinds of great stuff. And we went and looked at it, and we thought, you know what? This is a really cool place to do another workshop. So, on November 7th through the 10th, that's my long-winded intro to get up to this point. We've got a little commercial for it. Should we roll it? Yeah, let's just go ahead and roll it. All right. So, watch this. Oops. Hey, everybody. Aaron Blaze here, along with Ronnie Williford. How and doing? we are at Wakaiva Springs State Park here in Florida. And we're really excited to announce that we have an upcoming workshop a watercolor workshop that we want to do in November. So November 7th through the 10th, we're going to have a group of people here and Ronnie and I, just like we did in England a couple of years ago, we did in Sarasota uh, right after that, we're going to get a group together and we're going to do some plain air watercolor painting for four days. It's going to be a blast. Some of the things we're going to teach, Ronnie might want to talk to, uh, to you about a little bit. Well, for anyone who hasn't had the opportunity to join us before, uh, if you were a beginner, this would be the perfect time to come because we're going to be teaching, uh, you know, for beginners as well as anyone who's working intermediately. Uh, I've got some, I got some extra stuff for this workshop that I would like to talk about and teach. You got ants uh, on you. Do I? Yeah, there you go. Keep, I, keep talking. We're in Florida. I'm covered in, uh, <laughs> I'm covered in relatives. <laughs> this area here is one of the most beautiful places we've ever had the opportunity to teach in because this is our backyard. Uh, Florida is an incredibly lovely place to paint 
with uh, lots of green. And uh, but it's, <laughs> it's no, definitely gonna be a lesson in green. For yeah, sure. yeah, but it's not all green. Uh, it's a great opportunity to spend some time uh, being in a green environment and learning how to work in other colors and things like that too. So it's gonna be a really fun time. Yeah, the whole plein air experience is a lot of fun. A lot of people don't have that opportunity to do that. They paint in their studio, they paint from photographs, they paint from their computer screen. Mm -hmm. But here we're gonna be painting this scenery right here, which you see, plus the forest that's around here. There's also several springs that are nearby that are absolutely beautiful that we're gonna go and paint at. Plus, uh, like we mentioned earlier, there's tons of wildlife here. There's deer, there's bears, there's all kinds of cool stuff that we might see along the way. You might see a gator. Yeah, maybe. It, it could happen. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Now, some of the, the, the accommodations are really cool. We're actually staying at a camp here in Wakiva Springs. We're going to be staying in these awesome cabins out here with a beautiful fire pit right in the middle of the circle. And every night we'll be able to get together, hang out. It's going to be awesome. And as far as the weather goes, right now we're shooting in August. It's, re it's really warm. You might see that we're soaking through. Yeah. But by November, it should be nice and cool. We'll have some nice evenings. And what watercolor workshop wouldn't be complete without a pool? We don't even need to provide our own water. We've got water we can paint from right out of here. As far as uh, accommodations go, first of all, you just have to get yourselves here. Get yourselves to the park, get yourselves to the campsite, and we're gonna take care of everything else. We've got food provided. Uh, keep in mind also that the, it, this is cabin camping. It's, it's kind of a, like I said, it's a camp. So some of the cabins have multiple bunks. Uh, some of them have eight bunks, some of them have four bunks, but either way, it's gonna be a group of artists all together and we're hanging out and painting together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So more of the schedule will include, um, you know, basically we'll get up in the morning, we'll have breakfast, we'll go out and do morning paintings, we'll come back, have lunch, maybe some uh, afternoon lectures, then go back out again and paint some more. In the evening, we'll have fires, we'll have more lectures. Uh, and then maybe a, a couple of little drinks, have some snacks, we'll have a good time. S'mores, what the heck? And, uh, and then obviously we'll get some sleep so that we can do it again the next day. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And if weather permits it, I might do a demo of showing nighttime painting and how you go about doing a painting out in the wilds in the evening. That's really cool and it's gonna be a lot of fun for that. So remember, November 7th through the 10th, here in Wakiva Springs, Florida, we're going to be camping out. We're going to be painting. It's going to be awesome. So go on out, put some beauty back into the world, and we'll talk to you next time. Look forward to it. So there you go. So um, it's going to be great. And we're really looking forward to it. And I got to tell you, this, these just went up for sale and we're already over a third sold out. So if this is something that you're interested in. Actually, we're about half sold out now. Oh, so, good. Yeah. yeah. So if this is something you're interested in, um, jump on it because uh, these tend to go fast. Uh, all of our other um, workshops that we've done have sold out within two to two and a half days, something like that. And, uh, and so, and this one's basically going the same, same rate. So, um, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, it's right in our backyard, literally my backyard, my backyard, it, it borders the park and, um, we're going to have a blast. So, um, there you go. Uh, was there anything else to mention? No, you can learn more at creatureartteacher.com slash camp. I just go ahead and dive into it. Over on the website, we're uh, also running a 40% off sale for back to school. And as I mentioned, if you're a student or teacher, everything is deeply discounted right now. Uh, membership's on sale. So that's all we got. There you go. Punch it, Chewy. All right. Roop, 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 So what I'm doing here is I've got this, um, I've got this shot. So there's a scene, uh, there's a several, there's a section, I should say. There's a section in Snow Bear. Um, and when we first meet the polar bear, he's trying to, he's lonely and he sees these other animals and wants to be friends and he's getting shunned by them. He sees a fox and then as he's walking along, he's on the ice and he sees these whales under the ice. And so he dives into the water and in this shot, he kind of dives in and he looks off into the, into the distance and the, under the water and we see these whales swimming away. But the baby whale turns around and starts swimming back. This is that shot with the baby whale. So this shot, this image right here, this is the mama whale 
kind of swimming away, not really paying attention. And, uh, and so I started animating this this morning and, um, uh, and I got her all, pretty much all posed out. I'm going to, I'm going to get it all in between. Let me show you, uh, I'm going to turn on the baby whale right there. This is the baby whale swimming back. And then the old daddy whale right there. There's the daddy whale. And so if I play this, you'll see them, the, the adult whale is kind of swimming off and the baby whale coming towards us and so and then what happens is we cut back towards uh the bear he gets he smiles and swims out of the shot and then we cut to a a profile shot and we see the the, the baby whale and the and the bear kind of come up and swim around each other and uh but then the mom comes back and says nope breaks it up and he gets shunned again but anyway, this is the shot of the baby whale kind of turning around and coming back towards the bear. And so I'm just animating this mama swimming away with the daddy whale. And um, so I'm going to turn these off. What exactly is the difference between a section and a scene? Well, there's a scene and a shot, I should say, not a section. Uh, a scene is a series of, of shots. A scene is, um, you know, like in a, uh, in a play... Um, or in, if you're watching a movie, um, they might have there might be a scene in an apartment, you know, and, and there's several shots that happen before they go up and go into another part of the plot. So a scene is a collection of shots. A shot is just this. A shot is a single shot, and a movie is a collection of shots put, to, uh, you know, end to end. Uh, Snow Bear has 116 shots in it. Okay, so there's going to be 116 shots, and uh, there you go. Can we hear about Shot 16 or 17? Or... This is shot 14, but I've gone up. To, uh, I did 16. Yeah, I've jumped around a little bit. I've gone up to shot 20 so far. Um, so, like, the, the this section where he's on the ice and uh, and all the way up to the point where the mother, take, you know, comes back and separates the baby from the bear and, he, and the bear's left sad, that whole section is a scene. That's the whale scene. And then within that scene, there's several shots that make up the scene. So let's jump to here. And I'm going to add it in between. And we're going to... That's what I love about TV paint, is I can get right in there and blow it up. I'm doing this at 4K. But even at 4K, um, this is pretty small, and so it gets pretty pixelated. The brush I'm using, I'm, I'm, oh, let me go back. I'm, I'm using TV Paint software, for those of you that are wondering what software I'm using. Um, but even though I'm using computer software, it's still obviously hand-drawn. So the only thing different from the way we used to do it on paper is that I'm not using paper. Everything else is the same. I'm drawing just like I... Uh, I don't have to sharpen my pencil. I guess that's a little different. Well, also, what's different is instant playback. Instant playback. Yes, that's another thing I love. I can just instantly play it back, whereas back in the old days, I'd have to uh, shoot it, and it would take me a couple of hours, depending on... Like, this would take me quite a while, because it's three different layers, levels. Uh, we got a question. I'm really interested in your camp in November, but it would cost a lot to travel the, all the way over there. Are you going to do something like that ever again, or is this a one-time thing? Um, we will, one time thing, never again. <laughs> we will probably do more events like this in the future, but there's no none currently planned, and so therefore there's no guarantees. But um, you know. yes, we we will do one in the future. We yeah, we just don't have anything planned yet. Definitely for sure, we'll do another one. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Ed Zachary. Uh, Thomas says, hey, Mr. Blaze, I just wanted to say I'm hey, a Thomas. Big, big fan of your online lessons, and they've really helped me figure out how to animate quadruped animals. Oh, that's good. Yeah, animating quadrupeds is fun. That's some fun stuff right there. I like figuring out those mechanics. Because when you pull it off, it looks, it comes to life, you know? It's pretty cool.
What is the difference between extremes and breakdowns in animation? An extreme is a key pose. Okay, so that's the pose that dictates the movement. It's the it's the or the yeah, it's the pose that basically determines all the rest of the movement. And so it's like if you if you pose out a scene, let's say, um, you're going to be using all key poses to 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 pose that out. And then you can go in and you can break it down. So, for instance, if you look at uh, these drawings, I did this basically straight ahead, posed out. Um, let me blow this up a little bit. Or uh, bring it back. Okay, so if you look at the mama whale right here, every other, uh, actually every, well, let's say every other drawing is going to be a key pose. So there's this drawing. Then that drawing, then that drawing, and that drawing. And so those are basically the keys that really determine what's going to happen in that animation, right? And then what I do is I just go in and I break it down. These are all the breakdowns that I'm doing right now. So the, the drawings that are going in between those keys. And then I can break, I can in between that even more. And smooth out the action and that becomes my the the in-betweens so if we play this now you get nice fluid action but you can still you can see that it still is kind of jerky it needs it needs to be smoothed out even more and so that's what we're going to do next is i'm going to go ahead and add those drawings in there okay and I got a little surprise once I get this in between. I'm going to show you guys. There's a little surprise I got planned for you. But you got to stick around. You got to stick around for me to do 20... How many drawings here? I still need to do another 23 drawings. So if you can stick around for me to do 23 drawings, you're going to get a little surprise at the end. Stick around. <laughs> All right, now we're in betweening. And here we go. Now I'm purposely animating clean um, so that I don't have a lot of line crawl. I do want some line crawl because I just I like that look because it's handmade. But it also helps when we actually do the coloring. I can just touch it and fill it. When it's really, really sketchy, that doesn't work very well. The, the, the algorithm isn't smart enough yet to, to know what, what a sketchy line is and what a sketchy line isn't. So I'm just quickly, these these drawings don't take very long. That's the other thing. It takes, I, I take a, a fair amount of time to get the keys right. But once the keys are done and the breakdowns are done, I can kind of go on autopilot, play some music, and just draw. I, that's the other fun thing I've been doing with the uh, the live streams with the um, with the members because we keep those live streams private. We can play music. I can't play music with you guys today because um, it gets flag gets flagged. It. Copyright issues. It gets copyright issues, exactly. Those dang copyrights. <laughs> they ruin live streams. Uh, when did you last go to Disney's uh, Animal Kingdom? Oh, geez. I don't even know. You were there when uh, Pandora opened. Oh, that's right. Yep, that's when it was. So whenever that opened, a couple of years ago. Uh, Eric on Twitch wants to know, Aaron, have you ever seen orcas in the wild? I've never seen an orca in the wild. I've seen a humpback whale uh, in the wild. No, actually, no, it was a gray whale. Saw a gray Is whale in the Alaska? wild. Alaska? In Alaska, yeah. Oh. Uh, and I've seen, I've, I've seen them a couple times. I saw actually a, a gray whale in Florida. 
once uh, off the coast of on the Atlantic side a long time ago. Um, but never seen an orca in, in the wild. I'd love to. And then uh, another Twitch question. Will you be doing another pass on the line work after you've got all the animation frames drawn? No. Yeah, you're not doing cleanup. You I'm not want, doing cleanup. I'm keeping it rough. We want the line crawl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aaron draws pretty tight animation regardless. Uh, yeah. Not regardless anyway. So Irregardless. Irregardless. The whole it sounds very right tight. You know, I we don't feel that cleanup's really necessary. Plus, we want it to feel handmade. Yeah, I've actually always wanted to do a, a, an animated short even, even rougher than this, a lot rougher than this, where it really shows off the, the you know, like Glenn Keane's uh, Deer Basketball. That's, you know, that really showed off his rough drawings. And I love that. But, you know, this is really blown up. So you're seeing this very, very tight right now. If well, I show. I mean, the whole idea of cleanup, you're the only one animating in this. One of the reasons you do cleanup is to make. Yeah, get the characters. Different animators look consistent. Exactly. And that's not necessary in this situation. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, animators will, you know, we had six different animators animating the beast when we did Beauty and the Beast, and we all drew the that character differently. And so it was cleanup that put the character on model. But if I, let me jump over real quick to, uh, you know, here's a shot. That's in color, and um, and this is rough animation, but you know because of this. Well, it's a small screen too, though. But let me uh, blow this up, and I'll just scroll through. You can see that little bit of line crawl, but it's not super distracting. And I like the fact that it has that. It gives it a nice, it gives it that hand drawn feeling. Do you need a tablet for TV paint? Yeah, you're going to need either a tablet or a pen display like Aaron's. Yeah. So, there you go. I don't know if we showed this shot last week or not. I think I did I did this. When did I do this? This week? Anyway. So, there it is. See that little bit of line crawl? I like that. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm at the in-between stage, and this is, like I say, you just kind of go on autopilot. And uh, I've already done the struggle this morning. I <laughs> got up and drew in all the keys. And uh, Shea wants to know, any thoughts to ever make your way up to Canada? Toronto has a great annual animation festival. Yeah, matter of fact, um, we, uh, we were up there a few years ago. I did, well, actually, we weren't in Toronto. We were in Ottawa. But um, I did a lecture in Ottawa and uh, had a great time. Uh, yeah, I can see us being in Canada again, for and sure. And I've heard quite a bit about that animation festival over the years. We've always wanted to make it up there. We just haven't done it yet. Yeah. What's your favorite memory of your days in Disney? Oh, man, I've got a lot. Um, you know, it, the, the, the best part was just the camaraderie, the friends that we made. It was, you know, we were like a family. and um, And we're still close. You know, a lot of us keep in touch and... Um, you know, we get to see each other. Matter of fact, this Saturday I'm going down and a bunch of us from the old studio are getting together and going to hang out and have dinner together. So I enjoy it. And, uh, it was, the camaraderie was the best, you know, and, and, and the fact that, you know, at the time we were so young and making these big blockbuster movies, it was such a cool way to experience the industry and kind of you know grow up in the industry i got my job when i was 21 and you know i was working on beauty and the beast by the time i was 23. so it was really cool experience to to have
<clears throat> there we go. There we go. Uh, when did the uh, when did you uh, start on Mulan and uh, when did it end? I finished Mulan in '97, so I started Mulan in '95, ish, right after. Uh, well, I was on Lion King. I was on Lion King, then I went on to Pocahontas for a while, and then after I f finished Pocahontas. Then I worked on Trail Mix-Up, I think. And then after Trail Mix-Up, I went on to uh, Mulan. I think that's the order of the order of everything. What did you think of Miyazaki? Uh, he's a cool dude. He's a man of uh, very few words, and, and he gets right to the point. So I, you know, and I, what I, year was it you met him? Uh, There we go. It doesn't play smoothly at this size, but I can scroll. There we go. That feels good. Oh, you know what I meant to ask you, Aaron? Did you see the uh, the bonus episode to the Sandman that they added? No. That's pretty cool. So about two weeks after the season ended, they came back with a bonus episode. One of the first twenty minutes, or it's like it's actually two little mini episodes that don't really have anything to do with the main plot, which is why they aired them after the fact. Yeah. And the first one is called "The Dreams of Cats," and it's all animated and it's all from the point of view of these cats and wow you, know, you have to see it. it's uh they used a combination of cgi and real oil painting really yeah yeah i think you would dig it yeah i was meaning to bring that up to you for a while yeah i'd like to see that for sure do you think it would is a good investment to invest in tv paint yes um, well, it depends if, if you're, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's definitely an investment. If it's something, if it's, if you're just kind of have a kind of a fleeting interest in animation, then it's probably overkill. There's a lot of other apps out there that you can use to, to experiment with. Um, but if it's just something that if animation is something you want to pursue, then TV paints, definitely the, that's the software, man. I love it. And I mean, they, they make entire movies on it. We're making Snow Bear on it. Um, Cartoon Saloon makes all of their animated films on TV paint. Uh, Wolf Walker, Song Wolf of Walker, the Sea. Song of the Sea, yeah. Oh, yeah. Secret, well, I don't think they did Secret Red of the Winter. Kells, but. Yeah, Secret it. of the Kells was done on paper. Yeah. But uh, Red Winter was done in that. Uh, they've got a 
big one they've been working on right now for Netflix called My Father's Dragon, I believe. Yeah. Um, that's all on TV theme. And we're going to be... Um... We're going to be doing uh, some stuff with TV Paint, um, both uh, at Lightbox and at uh, CTN, CTN uh, coming up in uh, October and November. So yeah, I think this is the first time we've said on a, a Friday stream that yeah, we're going to officially be at both events this year. We we announced a while back that we're going to be at Lightbox. Um, we just had a conversation with CTN this past a couple of days ago, and we are officially going to be a part of uh, CTN in November as well. So if you are out in Burbank or Pasadena at those events, come say hi. Yes. Uh, can you share your brush settings? I'm still learning TV paint. Well, I, I don't have really any brush. This is the, the 2B pencil brush. And it's I I don't change the settings. Whatever the it's it's just whoops, I'm waiting for it to save. Um it's just if you go over to the side panel, kind of hover there, if this pops out, and it's the 2B right here. That's the 2B pencil. And that's that's and I just use it just like that. And I I've got it it automatically sets itself at uh 40% for its size. I've blown it up just a little bit, so it's 42%. But um but yeah, it's pretty pretty simple. Twitch question. Uh what course would you recommend that I start with from you, Aaron? Well, it depends on what you want to learn. I mean, there's a whole variety of stuff. So, but if you're thinking about animation and and character design, I would start with my uh introduction of anima animation fundamentals. Yeah, we have uh, a complete animation course on the website. And yeah. Fundamentals of animation, as well as the whole scene approach, where you do yeah, lip syncing. So, so you kind of go over the twelve principles, and then the second part is your approach to a scene with dialogue. And yeah. So the fundamentals, like Nick was saying, is I talk about the uh, the twelve principles of animation: squash and stretch, appeal, uh, follow through, overlap, all kinds of different things, and um, and it basically gives you that that introduction. Along with that. Um, I would take the uh, character design course as well. And that'll help you if you want to do some animation to help you design your characters uh, for animation. If you're interested in just general drawing, we always recommend for people to start with the figure drawing course or the human anatomy course, because if you get a good under, you're going to have to draw people a lot in life. So it's a good, good thing to start with. Yeah. And then um, along with that, I would get the uh, drawing costumed figures because mm -hmm. we have gesture drawing in there i've got several different mediums we do live drawing um it's a lot of fun and it's uh and it really um one of the things one of the reasons i did that specifically is that when i was in college i took a lot of figure drawing classes but they never really taught characters with costumes with clothing we just drew a lot of nude human figures and that's great to learn the the human figure but the practicality of it is is that when you're out there you know in the field you're rarely drawing humans naked you're you know you get to draw them with costumes and things like that and so i really wanted to have something that students could bite into in regards to understanding fabric and, and costumes themselves and there you go All right, let's get this fluke. Uh, Twitch question. Uh, after last week's stream, I decided to order some Bemoji pens and give it a try. They look super fun. However, I've heard that the bigger the brush tip, the harder the pen is to use. Do you know if that is true? Well, it depends on what brush tip you get because... Um, no, well, it depends. You know, I don't, no, I don't say that's true because I, I don't agree with that. Uh, only because I, it depends on you know, the effect that you're looking for. So if you're looking for really fine, if you're looking to do really fine work, then yeah, if you get a, a big brush tip, it's going to be a little harder to do fine work. But, you know, if you get the synthetic bristles instead of the felt tip, then um, you can get super fine with that and, uh, and get really thick too. And you get some really nice effects with that. There we 
go. See that tail flipping right over. I want to practice on traditional um, animation paper and photograph uh, frame by frame old school. Uh, what what do you recommend for software and camera setup uh, for shooting and assembling the frames into a movie? Well, we have Dragon Frame, um, but it's a little pricey. Um, I know there's other there's stuff out there you can get for your phone to, in order to play it back. Um, but, you know, the only one that I really know of that, and like I said, that we use is Dragon Frame. What does Dragon Frame cost, Nick? Do you remember? Uh, I want to say it's about four or $500-ish. It might only be two. I, I, I can't remember. It's been a little bit since I... Yeah, it's, it's a little pricey, but it works great. And actually, we just found out in the latest version, it'll, you can use your iPhone and photograph through... Uh, it, it works wire, wirelessly. Yeah, um, we actually did that on our last I went to look up live stream. Price for Dragon Frame with their sites literally down. It says they're doing updates. Great. Uh, let's see. Uh, got some other questions here. Is there a Cintiq that's similar to what you use, but not quite as expensive? Um, they're... Yeah, they have different sizes. They have different sizes, exactly. And you don't have to get the Pro. Um... So he's using the largest size, which is the 32-inch Pro, but there's also a 22-inch and a 24-inch, and then they've got a 16-inch. The 16-inch, yeah. And I think that you can get the 16-inch, I think, for about 350 bucks or something. I believe so, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, Nick, we got to, I've got that replacement one out there. We've got to switch that out. Oh, it's here? Yeah, I've had it for like a week. I just haven't had the time to switch it over. Yeah, I love my Cintiq. Love it, love it, love it. A lot of people say, well, you know, there's other ones out there that are a lot cheaper and yeah, there are, but man, I love I love Cintiq. Yeah, I love their walking the walking products. What animal do you enjoy animating the most? Um, well, obviously bears are up there. Uh, pretty much in any animal. I love I love animating all of them. Um, I've really since I've been animating these whales, I've really dug animating them and uh i'd love to do like a little short with whales i'm discovering you, you are doing a little short with whales. well i mean starring whales yes <laughs> uh josiah asked or just commented i learned so much from that human anatomy drawing course thank you oh That's good the of my heart i want to let people know uh that we have a 40 percent off sale on all of our courses going on over at creature our teacher Justin. Oh, yes. 40% off sale, tax school sale over at creatureartteacher.com. Um, that includes the how to draw, or the drawing human anatomy course, as well as all of our animation courses, character design, how to paint light, introduction to animation, acting for animation, all kinds of stuff. And then Josiah follows up with a question, says, is there a rule for when you should use smears instead of regular in-between? Yes. Well, it's not really a rule. It's just, it's a feeling. And it's basically when you're covering a distance that's so great, even on ones, that it'll strobe um, or it flashes, then you can cover that flash or that strobe by putting in 
a smear. And it's basically the same as a blur. A smear is just our, the animation's answer to a blur when you, something moves really fast past the camera. Because the shutter speed is, at, is 1 24th of a second, basically, for films. And so with that amount of time, in 1 24th of a second, you can really get a good blur going across the frame if something's really fast. Now, you may have watched films where, that get really stroby, and that's because the shutter speed is really fast and nothing is blurring. But if, you, if that shutter is open for 1 24th of a second, and film plays at, 120, at 24 frames per second, what's happening is basically it gets rid of all the gaps between frames. The, the, the blur kind of fills in the gap. So nothing will strobe. And so uh, if you find that you know, you've got a big gap there, then you might want to consider putting in a smear. A smear. A smear. And... Um... Are you keeping in mind uh, it's being blown up on a big screen as you do it? Uh, you're working in 4K, right? Yes, I'm working in 4K. And yes, I'm keeping in mind it's going to be on a big screen. If you watch, if you look at this, that's how big it is on the sh on the screen. So this is going to be pretty... Plus, when it has all the effects over it, the color... All of that, which uh, you might see later on, um, it makes a big difference. Twitch comment. I never got to tell you, or tell you thank you for taking the time to give me pointers at Lightbox. It helped me grow, helped my growth tremendously. Thank you for taking the time. Oh, you're welcome. I wish I knew who you were. I wish I could remember. Man, Lightbox is a long time ago, it seems like. Feels like it. And uh, Alexander on YouTube says, I guess you could say this animation is very well orchestrated. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's <laughs> Nick's kind of humor. People are saying, boo. <laughs> Get off this dang! <laughs> what animation do you like to watch in your downtime? Any animated TV shows you enjoy? No. Not really. <laughs> You're more of a live action person. I am. I like making animation. I just don't like watching it very often. It's been a while since I've seen hand-drawn stuff that I want to sit through and watch. I mean, you watch features when they come out. Like I do. Clouds. Oh yeah, and I love those movies. You're not. I guess. I guess that's the point. So I, yeah, those those are films I really like. Um, I'm getting over a lot of the CG animation, even the Pixar stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it's getting a little bit just for me. For me, uh, it's a little bit repetitious at this point. I don't um, think you're the only one that feels that way. I think that's starting to become. I'm ready for T for 2D to come back, which is what we're trying to do. Trying to make a little bit of a splash. How do you make uh -huh. your line look so smooth? My lines always look sketchy. 35 years of experience, pal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I just keep them clean. I don't know how to tell you. Uh, I, I make sure that I'm not... You're making bigger strokes. I'm doing bigger strokes, and I'm... Um, you know, I... I basically see where my line's going to go before I put the line down. <clears throat> Look at that. We're already halfway there. Living on a prayer. <laughs> Someone else says, I guess you could say it's very well done. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's no fluke. <laughs> yeah, see? YouTube comment. Hey, Aaron. 
let's just say I happen to be in Wokaiba Springs State Park and I happen to have my watercolors and it happens to be November 7th through 10th, what would happen to me? <laughs> You'll get sunburned. <laughs> half, you... the, half the fun is going to be the camping experience and the camaraderie and all that. Yeah. Stuff. We're really looking forward to it. And for people that don't know what we're talking about, November 7th through 10th here in Florida, Aaron's having a four-day camping workshop with Ronnie Wilford. If you go over to FeatureArtTeacher.com slash camp, you can learn all about it. It's going to be four days of making art and instruction, and in the evening we might even have some s'mores. Uh, we, we Playing got, music. Doing some animal drawing. We've got a lot of fun planned. So, uh, yeah, nighttime lectures. Check it out. Learn more. We've got a yeah. They've got a pool. We've got an outdoor movie. Panty theater. raids. Yeah, we've got a few things that we're got in the store, and it should be a lot of fun. I forgot the saddle. At home, do you cook Japanese and Thai food? Yep. Actually, I do it a lot. Dug on it. Dug on it. One of my favorite Thai, Thai dishes, oh, actually, um, I do uh, a lot of like pad Thais and um, uh, curries, like Thai style curries. And then uh, Filipino, I do like adobos. A YouTube comment. Hey, Aaron, I know how to paint from pictures in life, but I don't really know how to paint from my imagination at all. Any advice? Yeah, yeah. Keep keep painting from life, and over time, your imagination you'll be able to you'll be able to start doing. I had the same issue, and but over time, it just it takes hold, and you'll be able to do it. So don't give up is what I'm saying. You should talk about your concept of the visual library. Yeah, you know, the more you the more you draw from life, the more you'll fill in your brain, your visual library. And that's where you start to pull things from to work from your mind, right? So the example I always use is, you know, so very often we draw what, you know, symbols. We draw what we think, not what we know. And the example of that is if you ask a five-year-old to draw a picture, or actually not even a five-year-old, a lot of people, that don't have experience, you know, with drawing from life, ask them to draw a tree and, you know, often they'll go round, round, and then they'll go like this. Okay. There's, there's a tree. That's just the symbol of a tree that they have in their head. They're not drawing really what they think. But if you take that, that same person, that kid, and you put them in front of a tree and you have them look at the tree and then you have them draw, they might not do a great drawing, but they're not going to do that symbol that I just showed you. They're going to do something that was based on observation, and it's going to be a much more th thoughtful, observed drawing. And through the process of doing that, you fill your brain with information. You know, through that observation, you fill your brain with information. So that the next time someone asks you to draw a tree, you can pull from that library in your head and you can draw a tree a bit more accurately out of your head. And that goes for everything. So the more you draw from life, the more you will be able to eventually pull things from your mind. It just takes time. Uh, for your animation, uh, how many layers... Uh do you use from like your your base sketch to the highlights and base colors um the each one of these will have one two three layers so it's the drawing layer and then there's going to be a color layer 
And then there's going to be a effects layer. Um, TV Paint has a really cool tune shading uh, uh, feature. And so um, we can create slight volumetric type shading on the uh, on the characters. And so um, we'll be doing some of that. Not a lot of it, but some. Luke's getting a little bit tight in here, but it's oh, still yeah. work. Well, quite a storm. Saying this way, yeah. We're gonna get rained out again today from our bike ride. Most likely, take a look. Oh yeah, they're building up pretty good. Yeah, they're moving pretty quick too. Oh, mama. Yeah, look at all this that's coming in, coming in from the south. Yeah, there's a big one down there. <laughs> Southern California is supposed to get, there's a tropical storm right around San Diego right now. They're supposed to get, uh, well, they said there's a possibility of getting a year's worth of rain in the next day. What? Yep. Where? Southern California. Oh, now, I don't forget the one year where we had that uh, big fire in the mountains. Oh, yeah. And then, like, just, what was it, like, just a few months later, we had that light rainfall that lasted for, like, almost a month, just continuous rainfall. Yeah. So we ended up getting mudslides up in the mountains because of... Uh, the fires. Because of the fires, which loosened up all the soil. Well, it burned all the plants that hold the soil is yeah, what, exactly. what happened. Probably. Yeah. Have you ever seen Home on the Range? Yes, I was at the studio when they made it. Home came out right after Brother Bear. Right? Yep. It was supposed to come out before Brother Bear. But um, we were right on schedule. We were actually ahead of schedule. And they... Uh, we're falling behind schedule, so they they reversed us. They switched us. Have you ever tried Clip Studio Paint? And if so, how would you compare it to Photoshop? I'm, I'm thinking about trying some different art programs. I haven't tried Clip Studio yet. I think you installed it, right? That's about as far as you got. Yeah. Did I even install it? I don't know. I don't remember. I tried Krita. I know that. Yeah, I've done Krita. I liked it. I haven't, um, I've gotten so deep into Snow Bear, I haven't really been doing any digital painting to speak of for the last two months or so. What are your thoughts on all the AI generated imagery going around and what do you think its impact on the art market's going to be? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I think it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, I definitely can see now that I'm starting to see more of it. Um, and there's subscriptions out there. Um, I can see businesses doing that rather than hiring illustrators. So that's definitely a thing. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. Here's my thing with it, right? Like, I think it's just like, a, I think it's actually probably more useful as a tool for concept artists to get quick ideas down and then elaborate on than it is to replace them. And the reason I mean that is, and I'm sure there's going to be exceptions to this, right? There's going to be somebody that just goes, okay, that's good enough. It's good. I want just a cool image of whatever. The moment you want something specific or you want to make a change or anything like that, all of a sudden, guess what you need? You need an artist. Yeah. Yeah. So, because the AI program isn't going to say, okay, take that image and then change it and then do this. And at least not yet. And maybe it will in the future. So maybe I'm naive. I, I ultimately think 
just like anything else, just like CG didn't replace 2D, it's 2D still around, and photography didn't replace illustration. I think it's just going to be another tool. Yeah. Like anything else. And people that figure out how to use it best will be super successful with it. And people, you'll probably see a lot of really generic looking similar art for a long time. And it'll, you know. It might take us in a direction we never expected, yeah. too. Who knows what's going to come out of it. In Africa, does a lion or cheetah kill more humans like elephants, buffaloes, and hippos? Actually, isn't like the, doesn't the well cheetahs don't the, cheetahs don't kill anybody? Yeah, but yeah, aren't isn't it actually like the hippos being the most? Yeah, hippos are the humans? most dangerous. Yeah, I don't know that there's that many lion deaths at all. I mean, there was there was some that was back in the uh, oh yeah. Back, Way yeah. back then, but yeah, like Sabo, nowadays, Sabo, uh, the two brothers that killed like several hundred people. Yeah, the Ghost in the Darkness. The Ghost in Darkness, great movie. Yeah, but um, just saw there was a poor lady man that got uh, hit by a bull shark in the Bahamas. Say what? Oh, yeah, I saw that. A woman got hit by a bull shark in the Bahamas. Got bit. Got died. Yeah. Oof. Horrible. Oh yeah, have you heard the uh um the the Joker sequel? No. It's kind of, yeah, it was like a there was like a really quick like 10, 15 second teaser. Oh yeah? And um yeah, but uh it's gonna have Lady Gaga. Radio Gaga, Radio and, Goo Goo. The things that got Lady Gaga is gonna play as Harley Quinn. Oh, really? In this new, in this next Joker, yeah. Wow. It's a musical with her and Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. Is it really? Are you being serious? I'm being serious. Yeah. That's oh, what wow. they said. Interesting. Uh, YouTube question: Your experience with four-legged creatures seems to have gotten you a lot of work. Would it make sense for me to focus on developing my skills in something specific like fire effects, two D or three D, etc.? Um. I would just lean towards whatever you're interested in and dive into that. I mean, I I went after a, I I do animals because I'm really I love drawing animals and. But you you did animals because that's what the projects called for. Like you. That's were, true. You did Pocahontas too. People don't really and, and Mulan and stuff. Like yeah. That. You know you you love to draw animals, but you have to. Animate yeah, I mean, all the characters I animated in Mulan were all human characters. Yeah. You know and. I've animated Roger Rabbit, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I mean, I would say my specialty is animals. Someone commented on Twitch about the AI stuff. I like to use it for generating quick compositions that I then want to draw and paint, which I think that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. So let's see what we've got just so far. So now you can see, oh, I forget. Did I forget a tail? I forgot a tail back there. Watch. Boom, right there. I forgot to draw the tail. What did you do? I was yapping away and not paying attention. With all your years of experience traveling awards and meeting tons of people, uh, what do you feel is your greatest accomplishment to date? My children. Oh. Can an artist or animator work as a key animator and on backgrounds or both? Say that again. They're basically asking, can someone in animation do both animation and backgrounds? Um, it's not usual, not in the not in the studio world. Um, I'm doing it on this for my own project, or our own project. Sorry, um, but uh, uh, not typically. It, that doesn't. You don't really. It, it, well, once again, and it also depends on how big of a studio it is. If you're, you know, small independent studio with just a few people yeah you're gonna you're gonna be a jack of all trades um and there's good possibility you could do that 
But um, a lot of times, those two, those two disciplines uh, overlap. They overlap, and so um, it'd be hard to jump back and forth because they're being done at the same time. And I see I forgot a spot where the uh, the belly isn't. It's flashing off too, the belly markings. But there we go. We're getting there. She's working out. Have you tried uh, Krita to animate on it? It's very I cool. It's similar to TV Paint, from what I can see. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I've tried Krita, but I haven't tried animating on Krita. There it is. Another thing I forgot. That belly marking. I painted in Krita and really enjoyed it. You know what? This could use. You know what this could use? What could this use? Oh, it's fine. Looking at in betweens. They get they get kind of tight all of a sudden, but I think it's gonna work out fine actually. Are you going to do all the cleanup and painting for Snow Bear? We're not doing cleanup, and a group of us are going to do the coloring. Yes. So um, I've experimented and colored a couple of shots myself just to see if we can get the look that we're looking for, which I'm finding that we will be able to. But I'm not trying to be really flashy with this. I'm, we, we purposely want to go back to kind of old school feeling hand-drawn animation and just kind of rely on the beauty of that that quality of the handmade quality of it and i just want i want to show people that you can still tell an emotional moving story and you don't need all the fancy glitz yes we're using a computer to draw on but i mean i could have easily done this on paper as well um, and we could have traditionally painted it as well, but it definitely makes it easier to be able to draw it the way that we're drawing it. Almost there. Almost there. I have to average about 50 drawings a day in order to get this done on schedule. Uh, which whale's bigger, blue whale or a humpback whale? Blue whales are the biggest animal that has ever lived, including during the dinosaurs. Blue whale is the largest of all time. They're absolutely huge. Huge. You think of them apples. A, a blue whale's heart, just the heart, is the size of a Volkswagen bug. And it only beats once every 60 seconds. Yep. The aorta is big enough that you can crawl through it. Pretty amazing. I feel like when a whale, uh, blue whale's heart beats, the sound has to be. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit of a gush. What are the important bones in a skull that I specifically need to draw? You know what? Somebody asked that. I wonder if this is the same person. 
Well, obviously, it's the skull is every bone is important in the skull. It makes up the shape of our head. So obviously, you want to think about the cranium. You want to think about the cheekbones, the eye sockets. You know, because that's where your eyes sit inside. You want to think about um, with the eye sockets. That's where it really kind of you know, when you think about drawing a face, a portrait that feels convincing, so many people forget to, you know, sink the eyes in there. The, the nasal bridge, that's another important bone to give shape to the face. So there's a lot of different bones that are important when thinking about the skull. So it's hard to say any single bone, you know, they all, they, they just the whole thing. YouTube comment hey aaron as a compliment i just want to say that you're making a killer whale <laughs> <laughs> uh, i actually found that kind of funny actually is three, kind of that is three whale puns <laughs> or this this stream i like it Uh, for those people who might just be joining us, I want to let you know that uh, this weekend we're running our back to school sale over at creatureartteacher.com. Everything is 40% off site wide. And if you're a teacher or a student, uh, you can actually sign up for an annual membership for $150 off. Uh, that's the best value in art education anywhere. Get you immediate access to over 600 hours of uh, art and animation lessons and everything is yours to keep plus everything we come out with over the next year so bada boom bada bing creature art teacher dot cat oh I think vedanta's home vedanta you home Man, we're so close. Da, 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 da. Uh, Mandy Lee writes a, a Mandy real Mandy nice Lee? Comment. Hey, Mandy Lee. How you doing? She, she writes a real nice comment here. It says, I just want to say how awesome it is to be a member. It's special to me, and I'm so grateful that I have all these courses at my fingertips. I'm actually busy with uh, contract work and haven't had the time to do any courses, but knowing I have them... For whenever I for whenever I want is amazing. So thank you very much. You are welcome. You can be our spokesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, Loopy asks, how much basketball did you play at Disney, and who was the best player? I played very little because I suck at basketball. I can spin the heck out of a ball though, on my finger. But uh, Phil Boyd was the best. Claire on YouTube says, well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You people. And so so many of these are like my uh, my buffalo joke. Yeah, what bye, does son. Buffalo say to the calf? Bye, bye son. son. <laughs> this one's a stretch. Oh, fine. Hey, Aaron, when will this be finished? Finished. <laughs> Can you stop wailing over there? This whale, this whale's going now too. Now it's getting like Austin Powers, where we're just kind of. <laughs> this whale's going too fast. He's gonna get a cetacean. <laughs> a cetacean? Oh, a cetacean. that's a that's the family of whales. Yeah. A cetacean. <laughs> I'm I'm really stretching. After you, after you finish watching a French movie, Finn. Finn. <laughs> Finn. Look how big the the baby whale is <laughs> compared to what I'm drawing now. <laughs> so he's up close. Mama whale's far away. 
close far, close far. <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. <laughs> I still, I still love how, how good I, I, I got you yesterday with that. Oh my God! There. I was, I told your grandfather about it. Hi. <laughs> oh, you about gave me a heart attack. You almost <laughs> killed me. Yeah, for those that uh, miss miss you yesterday, uh, while Dad Dad was uh, talking, he couldn't he he didn't hear me walk through the front door, and I just kind of walked in the in the office and leaned over his shoulder, staring into the into the webcam that was being used for the. So they all could see you then, right? Yeah, they all saw me. And I just hovered over your shoulder there for like a solid ten seconds, looking at you, <laughs> looking at the camera, looking at you. And I just and I was debating whether or not to do it. So I just went, "Yeah, I'd do it." <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I think they mean hand drawn, but I'm going to clarify here. They're, I'll read it as they say, but I, I think they mean hand drawn. Are there any places for cell animators to get jobs now, or do you recommend independent shorts or personal or a personal animation business? Hand drawn animation, absolutely. There's studios all over the world that still do it. Yeah. There's tons of television animation that's hand drawn. If you specifically do actually mean cell animation, like coloring on cells, that's not really done that's anymore. That's not really done anymore. Um, it's just. It's not practical. It's, yeah. There's so many better ways to do it. I mean, Disney switched to, so switched away from that in the late 80s. Did you ever watch the show uh, Primal? Yeah. I liked it. I so. Don't they have a new season of it? Yeah, it just came out. Uh, Gen, what's that oh. guy's name? Is Jendi Tartakovsky? Oh, they just did a new season. He's a yeah, he's a Russian animator. Oh. It's Jendri Tartakovsky. I, I can never figure, remember how you pronounce his last name. It'd be fun to get a deal like that, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A little series like that. I really enjoyed the combining creatures contest you did and would love to participate again if there are any more contests coming up. Yeah, well, we're going to do some more of those probably in the near future. We don't have any more specifically planned right now, but stay tuned. Well, there's one we were talking about doing and the prize was going to be a new Tesla. <laughs> a new Tesla. <laughs> just kidding. I just want to make yeah, sure people are listening. Yeah, the, the winner gets a te Tesla, and the second place winner gets the uh, um, the same in income as uh, um, as Tesla himself. Yes, he's dead. But yeah, but he's dead. Did I forget but another tale? Huh? I can't tell if I forgot another tale or not. No, you go red on me. Yeah, it works. I think that works good. Let's turn on the Papa Whale. You missed the tail there. Let's play it again. Play it again, Sam. So, yeah, it's not playing exactly smooth. Let me shrink this up a little bit. So you can see it a little better. Unfortunately, I have to I have to play it small. It's just because it's a lot of pixels. The screen is... is there we go. That plays better. Right, yeah, they're going to be off in the distance. That's going to be fine. That works pretty good. 
Eric Bay recommends just make the prize a creature or teacher gift certificate. There you go. So here's the surprise, you guys. Let me show you, because for those of you that stuck it out, let surprise, me show you. Surprise. Let me show you something. So here we got here we got the baby whale. And as I turn on layers here, I'm going to turn on first the background layer. Boom. There's our background layer. Look at that. And then now let's come up here and turn on the character paint layer. Boom. See, I've already painted them. And then also I've got a character effects layer. Boom. So he's got a little bit of light hitting him. And let's go down to the dad whale. Actually, yeah, I'm going to keep the haze off for right now. Go turn on the character paint. And then the character effects. Boom, look at that. And when I play this, I've actually animated the light rays that you see coming through. I've animated those as well. And here's the effect. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to paint the mama whale. We're going to get that painted and we'll be done with this shot. And we're going to be able to cut it into the reel and you guys are going to get to see that. So I'm going to show you the process on the painting side of things. That plays pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Martin, uh, um, Martin being a, a, an eyewitness from yesterday's uh, stream incident, added a little extra detail where it says, uh, he writes, at first Aaron was turning around and said, oh, I think Dustin's here. But all we could see was the cat walking around. Then a couple of minutes later, Dustin came in. That's when the fun started. Yes. <laughs> Truth. All right. Let's go ahead and Player paint. Says, very well done, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, very that whale nice. is killer. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. Okay, so I want to use one of these as a color model. So I need to turn the effects off. That would be that one. Let's, let's use the, the dad whale. As a color model and so let's go down to our mother layer there she is and i want to do i'm going to add right here in the lower left take me off of there dustin but it's just the screen there. why did the sorry why did the blind seal get eaten by the orca i don't know because he couldn't see that whale <laughs> so stupid so that funny. From, uh, on a Twitch <laughs> and actually, I just started remembering of. Uh, all right, hold on, hold on. Just let me let me get this going. You Someone guys. said, if you ask I'm me, all these whale jokes are fishing for compliments. Yes. Okay. <laughs> shut up. All right. So now I'm adding I'm adding a color and texture layer underneath. So to do that, you go to new, and I go to color and texture layer, and it automatically gives me all of the drawings or the the frames I'm going to need. Um, the instances, as they call them, in uh, TV Paint, for that. And then, uh, since I'm on that already, I'm gonna. I can come up here. And I'm pretty sure, by the way, the CTG layer, as it's called, is only in the Pro version of TV Paint. Yes, I think they might be right. So I'm gonna blow this up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my eye eyedropper and I'm gonna grab the whale color right there, the dark color. And watch this. All I really need to do is come in here and just kind of draw around, draw around like that, and it fills it in. Boom. I can fill it in like that and fill in the gap right there. And that's that. And what I'm going to do is I'm then I'll go back and do the white and the gray saddle. Okay. Um, the other, there's another thing I can, I can turn on. I can turn on this these like these little eyeglasses down on the layer and it'll actually show where I've drawn to fill it in. I actually find that distracting. Oh, let me turn off the, uh, there we go. So there's our first, our first one there. Boom. Fill that in. And all I need to do is just go through really quickly. And boom, it fills them in. Erica says she's working on the Jenny Medford course today. Loving it. 
Yeah, I saw what you posted. That looks great. I remember oh. when, um, like, just after, just after high school, my, uh, my friends and I, uh, had a trip up to my friend's, uh, oh, uh hunting right. lodge with his parents. Yeah. And we were taking a break in the living, in their living room and watching the news. And on the, on the news, there was, uh, there was a story about, uh, a trainer, I think it was at SeaWorld that uh that got killed by it uh by one of the killer whales in the in the yes. tank by accident. I remember when that happened, it. yeah. And um they should not be in captivity. No. But one of my one of my friends, Dean, <laughs> just went on this friend was like, it's it's a killer whale. It's yeah. in the name killer whale. Well, it's not a friendly whale. It's not a hug whale. No, it's a killer whale. <laughs> Heard ya. <laughs> he just continued on like like that, just giving off different names for for like ten minutes straight, and we just could not stop laughing the whole time. People were saying, "Wow, the background's beautiful, and that coloring technique really cuts down a lot of time." It really does. This is one of the reasons I love TV paint and the ability to do this. And wait till you see, it's smart. It learns. And um, when it comes time to fill in the little details, it'll, it'll, it knows where to fill in. Uh, Rex on YouTube asks, do you have any uh, tutorials on how to navigate Photoshop? Uh, we have a ton of stuff on the YouTube channel where it goes over Photoshop, um, but also on Feature Art Teacher, and I just posted a link in the comments on YouTube, uh, we have a full Photoshop course uh, that's 40% off right now. Yeah. That one I spent a long time on. I really recommend it. I'm pretty proud of that one. Awfully proud. 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 And I'm going to show you how to do the effects uh, once we get this all painted as well. Uh, does TV paint go on sale? Not very often, no. In fact, I don't think it ever has. The, that I can but, that being said... But you just took the words out. Oh, of sorry. Mind. Go ahead, Nick. But if you're an annual member to Creature Art Teacher, uh, you get you can get up to I think it's up to forty percent off depending on what version you get, and uh, actually that basically means the membership pays for itself, plus you get everything on our website. So uh, you can learn more. I'll post a link on that, and uh, if you're a teacher or student, that all that also qualifies you for the student version. Uh, being a member of our website also qualifies you for the student version of TVP, and I should say. If whales lived on land, which country would they live in? Whales. Well, Martin <laughs> here says Finland. Oh, Finland. <laughs> Finland, yeah. Wouldn't whales be a little bit more obvious? A little. Meanwhile, Finland's a little more clever. <laughs> clever guy. Clever girl. Does this fill feature only work in Pro? I believe that is the case. That's a YouTube question. That, this is what they call the CTG layer. And yes, that is my understanding. 
Don't quote me on it, but I think that is... But you can... It's not as the fill. Yeah, he's asking about the fill specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the in the student version, you can create an animation layer underneath and just paint it like traditionally. Well, they have the student discount on the pro version, so you can get a student discount on the pro version. It's just there's the pro version and the regular version. Right. So. Gotcha. The, the biggest difference between the two, between the pro and the non-pro version, is that the pro version has some of these additional coloring tools, and it's a little bit more set up for studios. Like if you've got multiple people working in a pipeline, it's set up for that. For 90% of the stuff, the standard version will work, and you can always color frame by frame by hand. By the way, I just started this shot Tuesday. And we already have a finished shot. So you'll see in this negative space right here, it colored in this negative space. All you got to do is go to exclusion and I can get rid of that. See that? Click on exclusion and it gets rid of that little negative space and then take it off again. So now what we've got, we've got the silhouette done in the body color. So that feels pretty good. It's an interesting question. What do I need to learn to make it in the animated film industry like you did? Anything more specific than just being good at drawing and animating? Learn how to work with people. That's the biggest part. Outside of animation, be a team player. Learn how to not just be a team player. Learn how to take criticism. Learn how to uh, you know keep an open mind and learn. Uh, but the biggest thing is learning learning to be a team player, and knowing that you know not always your idea is not always the best idea. And uh, that's probably the biggest piece of advice I can give you, because there's a lot of people that aren't team players that don't end up staying at the studio. If you can't play nice in the sandbox, if you can't work as a team, then uh, animation is not for you. Eric asks, are you going to get more detailed with the play of the light in the water and on the animals in this underwater scene? To a certain degree. Um... There's, you know, we were actually I'm not getting super detailed with it. You'll see, and when I um, uh, when we uh, composite it, when we go into Premiere, I've got a couple layers in there that I've got a light overlay layer. We might do a little bit of debris floating in the water. We haven't quite decided yet, or not. Um, we're going to experiment with a couple of things, but I think by and large, this is working pretty well for its needs. You know, it's easy to get hyper focused on a little shot, but when you got to you got to realize this is a tiny little puzzle piece in a much bigger uh, shot and a much bigger uh, story. So what I'm doing here is I'm just filling in those white markings. You can see it's smart enough to know to just fill to those lines. Pretty interesting. Martin cracking a few jokes. Martin Berger cracking a joke? That's not like him. Saw a group of uh, whale musicians recently. They were part of an orchestra. Uh, uh. <laughs> I like it. I'll allow it. 
What's the difference between a marine biologist and a dog? One tags a whale, the other wags a tail. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Martin Burger. What are we going to do with Martin Burger? We're getting there. Look how nice this looks. So quick. Uh, do you know Ralph Bakshin? No. I mean, you know of him. Oh, yeah, but I've ne we've never met. He came to the studio a few times back in the day, but I never met him. Oh shoot, I've been I forgot to do the the tail this whole time. And for people that joined us late uh November seventh through tenth, uh here in Florida, Aaron and Ronnie Williford are hosting a four-day camping workshop uh it's a painting and camping workshop we've rented out a whole summer summer camp right down the road here and we're going to spend uh, all four days together uh, making art uh, all your meals are included uh, transportation's included to, uh, once you're here the only thing you have to do is get yourself here uh, but once you get here we're going to take care of everything else uh, spots are extremely limited on that. In fact, we're just about half sold out already. We just announced it uh, 48 hours ago. So head on over to preacherartteacher.com slash camp to learn more. Come on, fill in, baby. There we go. It's funny, somebody just caught this. We were talking about this earlier. Does the baby wheel not have white on the underside of its tail? Not yet. We've got to add that in, right? Yep. Just having that conversation before the live stream, actually. Have you seen the short film Lava? Oops. I, if it's one I'm I'm thinking of, it's uh, it's one of the whole the Hawaiian song of the. Uh, I don't think I've seen it. Volcano. I think you have. It's the two island. It's the two the, islands. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I did see it. I like that. <laughs> you obviously remember that melody, huh, Dustin? Oh. I'm, I used to listen to that song quite often. Come on, fill in. Claire asks, hey, Aaron, I'm currently in my first year of college in Florida, actually. Oh, nice. I was wondering if since I could not afford art school, am I still able to get good art jobs coming from a normal university? Yes. Absolutely. What's important, you don't even have to go to college. You can get art, you know, you art is one of those things where, you know, it's not like you need to, it's not like a law degree. It's uh, 
you got to show you can do it. And if you can do it, they don't care what your background is. I never got a degree. I did go to college, but I didn't get a degree. going to see this is going to look a little bit pixelated, but I'm blowing it way up. Would you ever do a TV paint intro class for those who are new, or could you recommend one that currently exists? I want to buy TV paint, but I've never used it, and I'm a bit intimidated. Go to my YouTube channel. I'll post a link. Hold yeah, because uh, I've got a whole series of videos that I did, uh, Nick and I did together, actually, um, talking about how to use TV paint. Yes, and beyond that, we actually are in the early planning phases of a coach um, so hopefully this all comes together and, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm copying and pasting the link and forgetting my thought that way through. I know. But that's something we've actually talked about doing a, a more in-depth course, but, but I'm going to post a link to our TV paint playlist where we've got a lot of those tips. you tell us the story when you met uh lady lady i think lady and uh william and harry thinking well, princess diana well i didn't really meet them i bowed to them they came to the studio and uh, i always say i met them because we i mean we looked at each other <laughs> but so i didn't lovely. speak to her um she came uh they were touring the, the animation studio this is 1990 geez, 93 or four maybe and um uh, when did she, she passed away in 97, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is a few years before that. And, um, uh, she came into the studio and we, you know, basically we all lined up and, um, and she went down the line and we all bowed to her as she came to each one of us and, um, never spoke to her, but, um, it was interesting because William and Harry were really young. And uh, at the time, we had a lot of, like, rats and mice uh, as pets in the studio. But we went through a little phase where we were all keeping little rats and mice in the, in the studio. And, um, uh, and so William and Harry were really fascinated by that. And so they just kept running around from desk to desk, looking at all the different mice. And they're going to just keep that white right there because it flashes off for just a few frames. So, yeah, so it was, um, it was neat. And it's, uh, you know, just knowing who they are and, um, and we were big fans of Diana and her story. Um, it was cool that they came in. I remember watching the funeral, her funeral, on TV, and you were watching it with me, Dustin. And I remember looking over, and you were crying, watching, watching Diana's funeral. Oh. Uh, You're just a little duffer. Just a wee duffer. Yeah. And I just gave you a big hug.
All right, let's see. Yeah, that plays better for what it is. So it doesn't flash. They're going to be, I'm going to push them back with some atmosphere anyway. Okay, so let's turn on his effects layers, the daddy o whale. So there's his effects. So if I play that, you can see I've got like a little shadow on him. So I want to do the same thing with her. So let's come back here and I need to come and extrude, extract, I should say, all the colors. So it makes a whole new layer. For some reason, you can't do effects on the CT, whatever it's called, CT, CTG, CTG uh, layer. So you have to ext ex extrude the colors and then you can make a, then you can do it. You can add effects. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go up to my effects, stylize, tune shading. No, you so, still just have the mom on fours, is that right? No, the mom is on twos. Oh, you're shading. Okay. I, got her, I got her all in between. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, uh, for that layer, I'm going to delete all. So now we're going to start fresh. And I'm going to go to tune shading. And you'll see right here in the middle, there's like this little light directional thing. And I'm going to turn the light this way. I want the light to match the, uh, the direction of the um, light beams. Right now, if you look at her, let me blow it up. It's, it's creating the shadow underneath. I don't want that shadow to be black. I want the shadow to be kind of a, a dark blue. Come on, come on, let me turn this around. Right in here. I want it to be kind of something like that, okay? And I want it to be oh, maybe about 50%, like so, all right? Oh, I haven't done the, I got to do the saddle real quick. Shoot, I forgot to do the saddle. Undo, undo. So, um, that color too, right? yeah, yeah, so I got to undo all that. So forget all, forget everything I just said, folks, until, until I'm done. Let me, uh, what layer am I on? I'm right here. So I'm going to get rid of this layer. All together, we're going to turn this layer back on. And I got to do that saddle real quick. Let me turn off his effects. Boom. So I can get a true color. Boom. There's the saddle. Color. There we go. This should go pretty quick because the saddle's only in for a few drawings. There, it's gone. I don't know if it shows up again, does it? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, right here. Chris asks, hey, Aaron, I was wondering, do you get jagged lines or brush lag in TV Paint 11 when drawing uh, long curves or circles fast? Happens on my 4K drawing tablet if the window is full screen. Um, no. Uh, it might be the speed. It might be your computer. You get playback issues, though. I do get playback issues, but not drawing issues. I have to play it in a small window.
Jackie says, I'm animating as well today. Oops. I couldn't get to school because in the Netherlands, the trains didn't run today. So instead of an instead, I'm animating with my friends of school. I'm instead of animating with my friends at school, I'm doing it alone. Wow. Good for you. And we're glad that you're tuning in. We were just in the Netherlands back in April. We had a great time. We were in. Yeah. What was our what was the uh, first city? Eindhoven. Yeah, Eindhoven. We were in Eindhoven and we were in Amsterdam. Yeah. All right. So now we can play that. There we go. Now we're accurate. Now we got all our color in there. All right. So now Come back here, and we're going to extract, whoops, extract all colors, same layer. And now I'm going to go back up to effects and stylize, tune shading. And I'm going to, once again, it's remembering what I did before, and it's stacking it, so I have to start over. So I'm going to delete all. Then I'm going to do it again. Chris just said, uh, I, I'm actually on the newest Mac Studio, so it shouldn't be a computer issue. And I just replied to him that actually I don't think TV Paint's been optimized for the Apple chips yet. So even though the computer as a whole is faster, the software might be slower. If that makes sense, because it hasn't been optimized for that chip yet, Chris. I do know they have... Uh, TV Paint 11.7 coming out later this month. I don't know if they've optimized it for the M1 Mac yet in that version or not. We'll have to send them a question to find out. Okay, so there is the shadow layer right there. Now watch this. Let's add another tune shading layer. And all we have to do is turn the direction in the opposite. Right there, change the color to there we go. More like the the light. I I hit I, I change the color to the actual color of the light coming down from the top. And then I also want to pull back on the spread a little bit. Let me let's see. Let me turn on his effects layer real quick. Jeremy asks, is it too late for a person in their 30s to have a career in movies, TV shows, and so on? No, not at all. I know a lot of artists that didn't start their careers until their 40s. I'll pull back on that spread. So now we got just Some a nice... No, yeah, it's definitely not too late. So now we have a nice, subtle kind of shading along the top that's that's light and along the bottom. Oh, let me spread that out more. I want to get a better spread. Yeah, that smooths it out a little bit more. Let me give it a few more pixels. There we go. A few more pixels just to play that a little bit more like that. <sighs> Let me go to, let me jump up. So I like that. Whoops. We have a viewer uh, from Latvia that's watching on Twitch. Says, Hello there. Hard to catch you uh, live often due to the huge time difference. Love your work and your courses. Well, thank you. Well, I just screwed up. I just deleted it. I forgot, I forgot to, to hit. Uh, Can you undo and bring it back? Yeah, I just tried to undo it and it undid. The, uh, no, I can't. Redo? No, it's, it's not, it's not hard to do. So I'll just go back and just redo it again. So once again, here we go. That'll be good to show it twice anyway. Here's a question. And this, I think it's a good one. Is there such a thing as a junior animator job? I've been trying to look for one and so far it seems impossible. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I mean, yeah, usually, that, that you know, job it's not, it's not something that you apply for. Junior animator usually is hired from within. You know, we had junior animators at our studio, um, but they were they were hired from within. And uh, 
yeah, so. Okay, so let's, uh, sorry, I'm thinking. Don't don't talk to me, I'm thinking. Spread yeah. that out. Viewer on Twitch that's working in uh, TV paint, and uh, they shared, uh, they wanted to, they shared a link to their, uh, they're working on effects animation, so. Oh, that looks great. Very nice. Super cool. Oh, I love it. Wow. Great job. I love it. Okay, so there's the shadow layer. Let's do... Wildflower Work Club on Twitch. Tune shading again. This time, we're going to turn it in the opposite direction. And we're going to change the color... So in that, the light. follow-up to that one question. So in that case, what would be an entry-level position to apply for an animation? Um, for 2D, an entry-level is a cleanup artist. And then you work your way up. Um, cleanup artist is an artist that redraws all the animators' rough drawings. And um, yeah, and that's, that's the entry level. Um, I, I mentioned this in a comment before but you know if you're looking for animation jobs there's animation job websites oh, out serious. there that post a lot of stuff also the best thing to do is look at the credits in animated content and find those studios and look at their job openings so here what's happening is it's applying the effect to each of the drawings so now if we come back out I hit play. Now they all have the same effect. Now there's one more thing that I've done. And this is just a, a temporary thing. But I've added a little haze layer between the mother and father whale and the baby whale. Between those layers. And so now what you get is this little bit of distance between them. Now I've got it set a little bit higher percentage right now. I can drop it down to about 20%. And that just, it just pushes the parent whales back just a little bit. Kind of nice. And I didn't put the white under the baby's uh, tail fin here because I, I, I tried it. And if you look, you only see the top throughout here. And then all of a sudden, you just see it for two drawings, three drawings. And so it kind of flashes on. And I found it distracting. Uh, but I will be adding it to another shot, a longer shot. So there we have the light shimmering. And they're swimming off into the distance. So now let me export this. Can a person major in animal drawing? I don't know. I'm sure there's a college out there that has I mean, typically, that as a major. Typically, that wouldn't be a major. It, it, you'd be you can, majoring in illustration or something and, like that. Yeah, I mean, there's, bio, would, there's, there's scientific just, illustration that is a major. You focus on animal drawing. You yeah. Know, the subject matter isn't always a major. So now if we go into Premiere and we go to the shot, it automatically updates the shot. So... It's automatically updated it here. And uh, Tom on YouTube asks, can you also animate opacity on that fade layer? And the answer to that is yes, you can actually animate all of those attributes. So now we've got them swimming away. Right there. And our little guy swimming towards us. You should show the shot of uh, him swimming in. The, the polar bear swimming in because some people tune in in the day. This one? Yeah. Should we show the long one too? This one here? Sorry, there's a lag, so. Oh, yeah. the, this one right here. If you want, go for it. So we'll show you the kind of this section. We'll show you the whale section. No music, because uh, I don't want it to uh, get flagged. Let me back it up a little bit. With the music skipping. we're using is temporary anyway. It's just for putting our reel together. 
So what happens is he's walking around on the ice and these whales come up and he sees them under the ice. Then we cut underwater. He dives in. This hasn't been colored yet, but there's the rough animation. Then he sees them and the baby comes back. He gets excited, swims towards them. And then this is a shot I just finished. Took me five weeks to do this shot. This is going to be fun to color. I don't think it's going to take five weeks to color. Nope. And they almost touch, but then a mama whale comes back and they swim away. And our poor polar bear is left sad. Very Boy, that cool. thunder is going. Yeah, you might be able to hear the thunder. Can you hear the thunder? Let us know in the comments if you can hear the thunder coming through the live stream. So I'm going to let this play. I'm going to show you this one more time. So he's on the ice. This is going to be a fun shot. He dives in. We're looking at it from underwater. And there they are, swimming off. Yeah, they can hear the thunder. Thunder, thunder. And the lightning. And then here they, they meet up. This is going to be really nice in color. They almost touch. He's happy. Boop. Nope. Don't play with strangers. And the whales swim off. And he swims up. I'll let it play through to the next shot. And now he's wandering. And he hears something up above. He hears the geese. And there he sees them flying away. Bye, guys. There you go. So if you want to see more of this and you become a member over at CreatureArtTeacher.com, we're doing two extra streams a week, uh, every Tuesday and every Thursday for our uh, monthly and annual members. Um, twice a week, some of those streams go all day. Some of them are a couple hours. Sometimes we'll go to lunch and come back and then do more. Uh, but we're doing, we're basically documenting the entire making of the short. We're going to take you all the way through the, uh, even every part of the process, even the music and score, when we get into that, we're, we're actually got some interesting uh, developments on that. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So uh, head on over to CreatureOurTeacher.com. If you are an existing teacher or student right now, we do this once a year. We've got our back to school sale going on and you can actually get a membership, an annual membership for $150 off. Uh, and we only do that once a year. So so there you go so you got to see the the animation part of it the coloring part of it and the compositing part so i just need to do that 116 more times <laughs> so and then we'll have a short <laughs> so anyway i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that i had a lot of fun uh that was two hours we just did that whole that whole layer in two hours not too bad not too bad um, at all uh i hope you guys have a great weekend have a safe weekend i'm gonna try to keep from getting hit by lightning here and um uh we will be back again on friday and if like we said if you go on over to creatureartteacher.com and uh sign up for a membership not only will you get all of the content that's there over 600 hours of it, art education and animation but you'll be able to tune in two more times a week while we make this short over the next 10 months so uh or nine months now or eight months um it's gonna be really cool and i love sharing the process and uh, we've had a lot of fun. And what's really cool about it is that it's a much smaller group of people. So it's uh, it's like a group of friends getting together every day. So it's kind of neat. So uh, once again, that's CreatureArtTeacher.com. Um, One other thing I want to let people know is that uh, is it next week that you're going to be out in Wyoming? Yes. Well, not the not the a week from a week from tomorrow. I'll be out in Wyoming. Tomorrow. So he's yeah. doing a five-day uh, workshop out in Wyoming. If you go to skbworkshop.com, uh, you can learn more. This is an in-person workshop. Uh, you're going to be doing painting, charcoal, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And uh, if you can't come in person, uh, you can actually, uh, they've got a whole Zoom component to it as well. So uh, check out skbworkshop.com uh, if you want to learn more. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Like like Nick said, I'll be teaching my my charcoal techniques, my watercolor techniques. We're going to be doing it live in the classroom. It's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, go on out. Uh, have a great week. 
Uh, have a safe weekend. Go out, put some beauty back in the world. Make somebody else's life better. And I will talk to you next week. Thanks. Yes. And creatureartteacher.com slash camp. Check it out. Check it out.